العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم إن الحمد, إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستغيره ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So last week we started Kitab al-Siyam from Manhaj al-Salikin لشيخ عبد الرحمن سعد رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة So as an introduction obviously it's a good time to start this وقت مناسب suitable to start Kitab al-Siyam since we've got Ramadan, inshallah, come approaching in about a month and a half or so. Um, naam. So we started with Kitab al-Siyam. We mentioned that Siyam is abstaining from something. Lucky when it comes to the linguistic, when it comes to the terminology of the scholars of fiqh, we said that it was a ta'abud lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala bil imsaki an al-fatirat min tulu' al-fajr ila ghurub shams So it is ta'abud lillahi, it is a worshipping of, worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a way of getting closer to Allah jalla wa ala. Uh, by abstaining from those things that nullify one's siyam, one's fasting. And we shall see that, inshallah, in the coming lessons, those things which nullify the person's salah. From the break of dawn, from the time of fajr, up until morning time, up until ghurub <coughs> shams, up, up until the sun sets. Then we talked about the hukum of fasting, the hukum in of itself, fast in itself. We mentioned that it is wajib, as the Sheikh says, Ya Yuh Ladina Am, and the Sheikh mentioned the verse of Allah Jalla wa'ala, Ya Yuh Ladina Am, Kutiba Alaykum Siyam, Kama Kutiba Ala Ladina Min Qablikum. So it is wajib and it's been prescribed upon us, just like it was prescribed upon the previous nations. However, the way that we fast and the way that we fast is completely, or is, it is different. So the, the hukum of fasting is that it is wajib. Then we talked about who fasting is wajib upon. The Sheikh says every Muslim that is baligh, every Muslim that has reached the age of maturity, age of puberty, uh, and every aqil, a person who is sane, and a qadir, and a sawm, a person who is able to fast. And we obviously mentioned that when, a, when we say Muslim, that takes out the non-Muslim, for they are not to be, or the ibadah won't be accepted. al baligh it takes out the... Uh, the person who hasn't reached puberty. So there's a difference between the age of puberty and the age of maturity. <laughs> a person can reach the age of maturity at probably seven, eight, nine, and they will be rewarded for the acts that they do, the fasting and the fa- uh, the zakah and the the um, uh, the fasting, the prayer, and so on. The Messenger Sallallahu commanded us to command the children to pray at seven. Lakin, when they reach the age of puberty, <clears throat> That's when it becomes wajib upon them to fast. And then we also said that the Sheikh mentions Aqil, the person who is sane. As for the person who is insane, then it's not wajib upon them to fast. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the, pre- the pen has been lifted, the bur- pen of taklif, burden of responsibility has been lifted upon three. The person who is young until they reach puberty, the person who is asleep until they wake up, and the person who is not well, who is insane until they become sane. Then the Sheikh says, Qadir ala sawm, the person who is able to fast, the person who has the ability to fast. And these are conditions for every single ibadah. Then the fifth one was, as min al mawaliq al shariah the fifth condition, or the fifth person that is wajib upon is, the person who is free from uh, mawaliq al shariah things that prevent the person from fasting. And we mentioned Hayd al nifas <coughs> And then number six, al-iqamah. A person has to be resident. So if a person is traveling, <coughs> then fasting is not wajib upon them. So today we'll start, inshallah, with the words of the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, bi ru'yatihi la lihi aw ikmali sha'bana thalathina yawman. Qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha ra'aytumuhu fa'afdiru wa idha, na'am, na, wa idha ra'aytumuhu fa'sumu wa idha ra'aytumuhu fa'afdiru. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقَدُرُوا لَهُ مُتَّفِقٌ عَلَيْهُ وَفِي لَفْظٍ فَقَدُرُوا لَهُ ثَلَاثِينَ وَفِي لَفْظٍ فَأَكْمِلُوا عِدَّةَ شَعْبَانَ ثَلَاثِينَ رواه البخاري رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة طيب, so the sheikh says, or the sheikh is now moving on to the next مسألة the sheikh is now moving on to the next مسألة 
So for example, when you're studying a book like this, what you can do is on the side, so for example, where my mouse is now, where the cursor is now, you can put a subtitle. You can put a subtitle. And you can entitle it, Bima Yathbutu Ramadan, or how is the month of Ramadan established? So anytime you're studying a book, especially a book of fiqh like this, on the side, write Anaween Janabiya, write subtitles. This dissects the mutton for you. This helps you understand and breaks break, you're breaking down the mutton, the the, the 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 book that you're studying, you're breaking it into pieces. And therefore you study each sect, each segment or each part on its own. And it's a total different masala. So the Sheikh says, So what how do we establish the month of Ramadan? How do we know it's Ramadan? We can possibly know by way of three ways. Three ways. Two are permissible and one is not permissible. I and mean, two are wajib, and the third is muharram, it is not permissible. The first is completion of shakma, uh, the sea in the moon, sighting the moon, the new crescent. That is the strongest way of establishing the entering of the month of Ramadan. Then we've got uh, ikmal shaban, completing shaban 30 days. And then we can, and then you have al-hisab al-falik, astronomy. Like that is not permissible to use, as we shall see. So the first one, the Sheikh says, بِرُؤْيَةِ And the evidence for that is, obviously meaning, seeing of the crescent, they see in the moon, moon. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهَرَ فَلْيَصُمْ It is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, telling us to fast if we see the moon, if we see the month. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُ As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ فَسُومُ if you see the new moon, if you witness the moon, then fast. This is a command from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the first way that Ramadan is established. Now, if a person is living in a city like this, it's extremely difficult for them, or it may be difficult for them to see. That's why even in the countries that send out people to uh, look out for the sighting of the moon, they go out into the into the countryside, far away from the city and far away from all the lights, and then they can possibly see it. So it's permissible for the person to see it with the naked eye. So if a person sees it, then <clears throat> they should go to the nearest mahkama <coughs> if they're in a Muslim country, and tell everyone that they've, far, they've seen uh, the month of Ramadan. Or if there is no mahkama, then they can tell everyone that they've seen the mahkama, that they've seen the moon. Or you can use a microscope or something to see the month of Ramadan, uh, see the crescent, something that brings it closer and it helps you see it. So that is also permissible to use. That is also permissible to use. Lacking, it's important to know that the person must be on the ground. They must be on the ground when they want to witness the moon. However, if they say we're going to go on a plane, then that is not, uh, it is not correct. No, it is not correct. So they should be on the ground. <clears throat> so that is the sighting of the moon. If you sight the moon, then you have to fast. Based on the verse of Allah, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ مُشَارَ فَلْيَسْمُ There's another masala which is, <clears throat> and it's quite important to know, who fasts? Who should fast? For example, if there are and the Muslims are now uh, to be found in every part of the earth. You can find Muslims in every continent. If the sighting of the moon, if the moon is sighted in one location, is it wajib for the whole Muslim ummah or all of the Muslim ummah <coughs> to fast? This masala is called ikhtilaf al mataliq It's called ikhtilaf al mataliq So, مثلا, the scholars talk about the fact that is it wajib upon those people that witness the moon in a certain place, the witness the, uh, the, 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 the month in a certain location, is it wajib for the other part of Muslims to witness it, the, to, to fast, based on their sighting. There's khilaf on this issue. Lakin, uh, in, in, in summary, 
The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, So he connected the ruling to the sighting. So if it hasn't been sighted in a certain location, then it cannot be made wajib for them to fast because they haven't obviously sighted it. Obviously, given the fact that they already send people out to go and look, and then, and also the fact that they are able to see the moon, they know what they're looking out for, they know how to sight the moon, how to sight the moon. Like in every country is responsible for their, uh, يعني, their sighting. Every country is responsible for their sighting. And if it so happens that a few countries that are nearby one another sight the moon, or they rely on one country to sight the moon and they all fast based on the sighting of this country, then that is also permissible and it is also good. It is also good and it's befitting because it unites the Muslims. It unites the Muslims. So, Mathalan, those countries that are nearby, those countries that are near to one another where the time zone, the time difference is probably two, three hours, four hours, more often than not, the sighting of the moon is going to be similar in these countries. So what they should do is fast with one another. However, there are countries that it's impossible to have the same sighting. So for example, now in the United Kingdom, it's 2.20 in some, during 2.20 p.m. In some countries, it's 2.20 a.m. So it's impossible for us to have the same sighting as them. Right. The evidence for this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas عنه, in which an, uh, a tabi'i by the name of Quraib said that Umm Fadl bin Talharith anha, she sent him to Sham. She sent him to Muawiyah and Muawiyah was in Sham. Anha. Then he went to Sham. He She needed some business transactions done for her and so on. She needed a haja. After completing whatever it was that she wanted him to do, the month of Ramadan started whilst he was in Sham. The month of Ramadan started whilst he was in Sham. Right. So this companion who was, or this Tabi Afun, who was Min Ahl Medina, who left Medina, went to Sham, he stayed in Sham, and then whilst, or during his stay, the month of uh, Ramadan started. And they started to fast Laylatul Jum'ah, the night of the Jum'ah, the night of Jum'ah. And beware, in, uh, يعني, pay attention when you hear Laylatul Jum'ah or Laylatul Sab or Laylatul Ithnayn in the books of fiqh, it is using the Islamic calendar, an Islamic way of calculating. So for example, today, now, يعني, in a couple of hours when Maqab comes in, this is called Laylatul Ithnayn. This is called Monday night. Whereas يعني, in the Gregorian calendar, uh, according to others, not using the Muslim calendar, it's a Sunday night. So when Quray is saying this, then it was a Thursday, and in the evening, that's when they witnessed the moon. That's when their month of Ramadan started, Laylatul Jum'ah. So tomorrow was Jum'ah. So in Islam, the night precedes the day. The night precedes the day, except for Yom Arafah, and there is, and we'll see that inshallah in Kitab al-Hajj. Right. So ala kulli hal, Quray, who was in uh, Madi, uh, Sham, the month started on a Thursday night. Uh, on a Friday night, on a Friday night, Friday evening. Then obviously they started there fasting. He spent some time over there. Then he came up back to Medina. Then he came back to Medina or Makkah, uh, where Abdullah ibn Abbas was radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right. Then he asked him, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu asked him when they saw the moon when they witnessed the sighting of the moon. And he said to him, we witnessed it, Laylatul Jum'ah, the night of Jum'ah. <clears throat> فقال, Did you see it? فقلت, نعم. I saw, do I witnessed the moon, الناس, and the, the people also saw it. وصامو, وصامو I fasted and everyone fasted, and Muawiyah also fasted. Muawiyah also fasted. فقال, لكننا, يعني Abdullah ibn Abbas said, لكننا رأيناه ليلة السبت. لكن, however, we saw the moon on the night of Sabt, meaning the next evening. That's when we saw the moon. So we will continue to fast until we finish the 30 days or until we sight the moon of Shawwal. Right. So this time I said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Do you 
will you not suffice with the sighting of Muawiyah and his fasting? فَقَالَ لَا هَكَذَا أَمَرَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لَا I will not fast. هَكَذَا أَمَرَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ And that is what the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded us with. That is what the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded us with. So in this hadith we find that the Muslims in Sham, Damascus, Syria and so on, had or started the month before those living in Hijaz, Mecca and Medina and so on. And they did not fast together. Likewise, there's no evidence stating that the Messenger وسلم, or the Khulafai Rashidun after the Messenger وسلم, that when they witnessed the month of Ramadan that they would send out message, the, uh, send messengers out to all of the places where the Muslims resided in order for them to fast. In order for them to fast. So we don't have the Messenger and all the companions commanded all of the other Muslims to fast. And also, third, thirdly, when it comes to the time of iftar, it's naturally we fast at different times. And Muslims that are residing in one part of the country or one part of the earth may obviously be going through daytime. So now, for example, it's 2.20 as we said. Like in another country, it's a totally different time. It may be morning for them or it may be evening for them or it may be um, uh, mid-morning mid, mid for them, Zuhr time, for example. Like if it's Zuhr time, it would be close to us, Harakullin. Like, and it might be a completely different time of the day, morning time, for example. So obviously, we're not going to have the same sort of matali. <clears throat> however, however, what we have to be careful of is two issues. Firstly, making it into a political issue. Making the sighting of the moon into a political issue, whereby if one country fasts, they say, why are they not fasting with us? Or they have to ask of their blind following their own shiyukh and so on. And that's what happened in the last Ramadan. Last Ramadan, certain countries sighted the moon, although it was very late. Although they sighted the moon very late in the evening. Like they said they sighted the moon. Other countries did not sight the moon. But that's, that's fine. They sighted the moon, they fast, and they didn't sight the moon. They, don't, they did not sight the moon, they do not fast. There doesn't have to be a khilaf in it. Or there does the Muslims should not differ and should not harbor hatred towards one another because of this khilaf. Because of this khilaf is a khilaf which is fiqhi. Lakin, when does it become blameworthy? When it is based on politics or racism and so on, where they say we're not going to fast now because last year they didn't fast with us. So why are we going to accept their moon sighting? The second issue is that people should not mock the sighting of the moon. People should not mock the sighting of the moon. Sadly, you find people mocking this, mocking the sighting of the moon on social media and even making memes about it. I mean, making memes about it and making it into a joke, whereby I'm as sure as Eid coming in or so, meaning I'm not sure whether it's this night or that night, or this day or that day. So it's not permissible to uh, make it into a, a, a laughing matter. This is a sharia, sha'aik. From the Sha'ir of Islam. Sha'ir from the Sha'ir of Islam. It's a sign. It's a signpost, a monument of Islam, a sign of Islam. So you cannot mock the sighting of the moon. So the Muslims should not mock. I mean, the non Muslims mocking the Muslims is understandable. Yeah? That's what they do. They mock the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They mock Allah, jalla wa ala. Like in Muslims should not make it into a laughing matter. So the Sheikh says, Oh, Ikmal is Sha'bana Talatina Yawm. The second way of establishing the starting of the month is by Sha'ban, uh, the month of before Ramadan, by Sha'ban, by us fasting Sha'ban 30 days. So, for example, if we're now on the 29th of Sha'ban and we're doing the sighting and we're looking out for the moon and we do not see it, and we do not see whether there are clouds or storms going on, whatever it may be, or whether the sky is clear. For whatever reason, if we do not sight the moon of Ramadan, the, the, the crescent for Ramadan, then we do not fast and we complete Sha'ban 30 days. That's based on the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu If you witness it, fasumu, then fast it. The understanding is that if we don't see it, then we do not fast. And also in that same hadith, the Messenger sallallahu said, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ if you're not able to see it, then calculate it. Some of the scholars explain this to be completing Sha'ban 30 days. 
And that's clear in the other narrations. That's why Sheikh Sidi Rahimahullah, he mentions the other narrations, which are in the same hadith. فَقْضُوا لَهُ ثَلَاثِينَ فَقْضُوا لَهُ Meaning, fast 30 days of Sha'ban. And in another narration, فَأَكْمِلُوا عِدَّةَ الشَّعْبَانَ ثَلَاثِينَ Complete the Sha'ban, the month of Sha'ban, ثَلَاثِينَ Complete the days of Sha'ban for 30 days. رواه البخاري. So from this, we see a side benefit, which is the fuqaha, rahimahumullah, may Allah have mercy upon them, you will find that they'll bring a hadith and then they will say, wa fi lafdin, and in another narration, or fi riwayatin, and in another uh, narration. Same hadith, different wording. Why do they bring same uh, the same hadith like in, from different angles, from different wordings? Because there is a new hukum to be found in the second narration, for example. So for example, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقَدُوا لَهُ ثَلَاثِينَ If you're not able to see it, if you cannot see it for whatever reason, فَقَدُوا لَهُ ثَلَاثِينَ This part, some of the scholars say فَقَدُوا لَهُ مِنِينَ طَيِّقُ عَلَيْهِ Meaning, uh, fast 29 days and then carry on, uh, start the new month of Ramadan. Lakin, these other narrations, they clarify and explain the meaning of فَقَدُوا لَهُ Meaning fast 30 days, complete the 30 days of Ramadan, uh, of Sha'ban, فَأَكْمِلُوا عِدَّةَ شَعْبَانَ ثَلَاثِينَ Right, so that is the, uh, the, the next way of establishing the month of Ramadan, which is completing the fasting of Sha'ban. They're completing, the, they're completing Sha'ban for 30 days. Right, the third way which is not permissible, is using astronomy. Using, method, for example, on the calculator, on the calendar saying, the month of Ramadan is going to start on method April the 19th or April the 12th or wherever it may be. And it's been calculated way in advance by using calendars or by using astronomy and so on. But that is not permissible. And there's an ijma' from the scholars of Islam that from the time of the Messenger وسلم, the Tabi'een and the Atba'u Tabi'een and, and those that came after the Tabi'een that it is not permissible and the Muslims should only establish the entering of the month using two methods first by completing or first by the sighting of the moon and if they do not do not sight the moon the second being that they <coughs> complete Sha'ban which is the month before Ramadan for the completed room 30 days Lacking as for using astronomy, then this contradicts the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if it was permissible, then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have uh, would have commanded it. Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions Thabatat aw thabata bi sunnati sahihati wa tifaq sahabati ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhi annahu la yajuz al-i'timad ala hisab al-nujum. The Messenger, the Shaykh says, rahmatullahi alayhi Shaykh al-Islam, that it has been established in the sunnah, of the authentic sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ittifaq wa bi ittifaqi sahabati afwan thabata bi sunnah al-imam sahihat wa bi ittifaqi sahabati and the uh, consensus of the sahaba annahu la yajuz that is not permissible and i'tamad ala hisab al-nujum that is not permissible to use astronomy and to rely upon that to rely upon the, uh, the, the, the astronomy or using the stars and so on to calculate when the month of Ramadan will start or when it could start or when it could not start, when it's not possible for it to start. Then there's another masala that the scholars talk about in regards to this masala, which is a side topic, which is Yom Shak. What is Yom Shak? Yom Shak is the 30th day of Sha'ban. If it was not possible for us to sight the moon due to a storm or due to clouds covering the sky. That is the the the, the Yom Shak, when it's the thirteen, the thirtieth of Sha'ban, when we're not able to sight the moon because of or when or when there's when the sky is not clear, when there's a storm or when there's clouds covering the yeah. sky, and that is the day that it's not permissible to fast. Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu in the hadith, authentic hadith, said that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or, or he said, Afan, Man Sama Yom Shakin Fakad Asa Abel Qasim, the one that fast Yom Shak, the day of Shak, the day that there's a doubt surrounding, Fakad Asa Abel Qasim, then he has obeyed, uh, disobeyed Abel Qasim, meaning he has disobeyed the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Right. 
the sheikh is now moving on to the next masala, which is whose shahada do we accept? So we said that by the entering of uh, by the witnessing of the moon, we can establish the fasting of Ramadan. Fine. Like in whose witnessing can we accept? What are the traits of the person whose witness, whose testimony we can accept? The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, wa yusamu bi ru'yata adzin lihilalihi wa la yuqbalu fi baqiyati shuhuri illa adlan. So the Sheikh says, Rahmatullah alayhi, when it comes to who, whose testimony we accept, or the number of people, then we accept one person who is adl, who is just, a person who is just. And when they're talking about a person who is just or ad, they say it's malakatun tahmil sahibah ala mulazamat al taqwa wal murua. It is a trait that in, encourages the person who has it and it keeps him uh, upon righteousness and taqwa, between, or it keeps him upon fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having righteousness, having istiqama and being upright. So that's the person whose testimony we can accept. So it's not anybody who we can accept. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If a fasiqa comes to you with a piece of news, then تَثَبَّتُوا in another qira'ah. Then فَتَبَيَّنُوا Make sure that you check and reaffirm that this news is true. Also, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, فَرَاءَ النَّاسُ الْهِلَالَ فَأَخْبَرْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ so the messenger so Ibn Umar عنه, says that the people went out to look for the month of Ramadan, meaning to see the sighting of the moon. And I told the messenger وسلم, that I have seen uh, the sighting of the moon. I have sighted the moon. Then he fasted the messenger وسلم, based on my testimony. He fasted and he commanded the people to fast. The Sheikh is now moving on to the next masala, which is Wayajibu Tabitu Niyati Lisriyamil Fard Wayajibu Na Wa Amma Naflu Fayajus Bi Niyati An Nahar. But the next masala is with regards to the intention, with regards to the intention. So he says, The Sheikh Rahmatullah Alayhi Wayajibu Tabitu Niyati Lisriyamil Fard. For the fast in that is obviously you'll do your sub. Subtitle on on the side. So, for example, this kitab or this nuskha is already divided into uh, parts. So, two, four, four, two hundred forty-four. So, you can write, for example, tabiyatun niya or wujubun niya, the obligation of the niya. Right. Wa tajibu or wa yajibu tabiyatun niya til siyam al fad. The Sheikh in this part mentions that. When a person intends to fast, he must have the fast, he must have the intention to fast the day after. He must have the intention to fast the day after if it's fard, if it is fasting which is wajib. And what comes under fasting which is wajib? Firstly, the month of Ramadan. So, for example, Ramadan is a fasting which is wajib, therefore a person has to have the intention or uh, have the intention to fast more or. Uh, have the intent, uh, whether it's the fasting or fast uh, Ramadan, or the one that is making up Qada, Qada or Ramadan, or another, and a fasting that he has vowed to uh, to do something, and then he is uh, expiating his vow, or an expiation, a kafara. So these are the fasting, the types of fasting that it is wajib to have the niyyah, and the reason why it's wajib to have the niyyah from the night before is because they are fasting, which is wajib, or it is fasting, which is wajib. Like, when we say the night before, when can this niyyah be? Is that the earliest part of the night, midway through the, uh, through the night, or just before Fajr? The answer is any time before the time of Suhoor, during the time of Suhoor, their niyyah can be started or established at that point. So, for example, you can straight after Maqib comes in you can say I'm going to fast tomorrow you can also have the intention after Isha you can also have the intention halfway through the night or you can also have the intention or start your intention make your niya, make your intention just before Suhoor or during Suhoor Aham Shaykh the most important thing is 
that you fast before you have the intention before the time of fasting before the time of fasting and that is based on the hadith in the man bin niyat firstly in the man amalu bin niyat and also the hadith hafsa man lam yujmi as-siyam qabl al-fajr fala siyam lahu man lam yujmi as-siyam qabl al-fajr fala siyam lahu in this hadith this maqal in it some scholars say it is da'if Lakin, even if it is, then the hadith in the man bin niyat is enough for this fasting. And also the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is the fasting which is wajib. Right. As for the voluntary fast, the sunnah fasting, for example, Monday, Monday, Thursdays and so on. Then it's permissible to have the niyyah from the daytime. During the daytime. Meaning you don't have to have the intention before uh, the time of, before the time of Sahur itself, or before the time of starting your fasting, Fajr time. However, obviously that's based on the condition that a person doesn't do anything that will nullify his fasting. So for example, if a person has breakfast, halfway during the day, they can't say, uh, I want to make the intention of fasting. Why? Because they've already broken their wudu. Uh, they've already broken their fasting. They've already done something that harms their fasting. So the condition for this is that a person doesn't do any of the things that nullify a person's fasting. So for example, if a person wakes up at 10 a.m. and the sun sets at 3.30, and they say to themselves, I've only got about five hours, I'm going to fast for the rest of my day. That's fine. As long as, as long as they haven't done anything to break their fast beforehand. And the scholars use as evidence in the hadith of Abdul, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, in which the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to her and he asked if there was any food in the house. He asked if there was any food. Hal indakum shay? Is there anything that I can eat? Fa'ulna la. Then Aisha radiallahu anha said la. Qala fa'inni idhan sa'imu. Then verily I am fasting. Verily I am fasting. Then on another day, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ask them, is ask them the same question, is there anything to eat? And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha said, lana haisu, which is a type of food. Someone gave us this type of food as a naam, as a as a gift. Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Aginihi, fa akala. Give it then. He asked for Aisha, he asked for the food and said he ate it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Verily, I was fasting, I woke up fasting. So the scholars take from this that with regards to the fasting, which is sunnah, it is permissible to make it up from the day. It is permissible to make your niyyah during the day. Like what will he be or she be rewarded for? What will that Muslim be rewarded for? They will be rewarded for the part or the portion that they have fasted from the day. So if they make the intention midday, Zuhur time, or just before Zuhur, or even before during the time of Duha, they will be rewarded from that point onwards up until the end of the day. Now, the next masala the Sheikh is going on to or moving on to is in terms of who is allowed to or siyam ahl adag, those people that are excused from fasting. Those people that are excused from fasting. So you can see 246 point, uh, masala 246. Now, والمريض قال الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى والمريض الذي يتضرر بالصوم والمسافر لهم الفطر والصيام. طيب. So the first category of people is المريض الذي يتضرر بالصوم. The person who is not well, the person who is ill, who is harmed by fasting. So if a person is ill and they are harmed by their fasting. والمسافر and the person who is traveling لهم الفطر والصيام they are they have the option of fasting and they have the option of breaking their fast. طيب. the fact that the sheikh is moving on to this now it shows the completeness of the sharia and it shows the good taktib the good the, the way uh, that the scholars have a good order and a good uh, categorizing of al-ilm. So where the Sheikh talked about who the hukum of fasting, 
Then he talked about who it's wajib upon. Then he talked about how to establish the month of Ramadan. He now moves on to uh, those situations that can arise where a person can be ill or a person may need to travel. That's now the category that the Sheikh is moving on to. And that's exactly how the scholars in their books, the scholars of fiqh, that's how they categorize uh, these types of abwab or these types of chapters. And this makes it easier for the person, for the reader, for the dargis, the person who study it, to understand and comprehend what has been mentioned or the issues that are being at hand. Like, so the sheikh says the person who is ill, who is harmed by his fasting, by the fasting, then he's allowed to break his fast, and he's allowed to fast, just like the musafir. And that's based on the verse of Allah Jalla wa kan maridun wa ala safarin fa'iddatu min ayam al-ukhar. And the person who is ill or who is traveling, then he has to make up other days. Make up meaning, make up the fasting. Like, illness is of two types. Al Magad, the person being ill, is of two types. The first type is Mala Yurjabu. The first type is a type of illness that a person is not expected to get better. Expected to get better. They're not expected to get better. And that is the norm. It's not to say that Allah Jalla wa ala can't make it better for them or cure them. Lakin, it's to say that this is the norm. It is the, 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 the adah of the people. So, for example, if a person has got uh, certain illnesses like diabetes, more often than not, diabetes doesn't go away easily. Therefore, this person comes under the second category that we shall see. Or if a person has epilepsy and so on. This type will come under uh, the type that we shall see, inshallah, later on. Like in the type that we're referring to now is mayuk jabubuhu, the type who a person is expected to get better. So, for example, if a person has a headache, if a person has fever, if a person has a flu, if a person has a sore throat, and so on, or if a person is going into surgery and they're coming out, um, uh, they, they're coming out within the same day and so on, or within a few weeks and so on, and they're not going to—they're not bedridden and so on. So all of these are types of illnesses that a person is expected to recover from. Right. So these illnesses that a person is expected to recover from, the scholars categorize them into different parts. The first type is Allah yatatagga bissaw, that a person is not harmed by fasting. So if a person is ill and they've got a mild headache or they've got a sore throat which is mild and they're not harmed by this fasting, by them fasting and they don't find it difficult, then it is wajib for them to fast. Although they are ill, like in this ill illness, is not at a, it's not at a level where they cannot bear the fasting of Ramadan. The second category is an yashuqa alayhi siyam min khayyitagagin where the second type is if it is difficult for the person to fast then it won't harm them so it's, there's some sort of difficulty some sort of burden upon them whereby they can't drink or they can't take the tablets paracetamol and so on but lakin they can put up with it it's bearable and they won't be harmed in the long term the Sheikh says, for Sunnatu, I mean, the, the Sharikh, the, the, the person whose explanation, uh, the, the scholar that's explaining this, for Sunnatu al Fadr, wa yukahu siyam. The Sunnah is that this person breaks their fast, takes the tablets that they need to take, and it is disliked for them to fast. It is disliked, disliked for them to fast. So, yeah. So, Mathalan, if a person has mild COVID symptoms, Mathalan, they've got mild COVID symptoms, like they can bear the fasting and they're not harmed by it, like they find it difficult. For them, it's better to break their fast and then make up the days that they miss later after, later on after Ramadan. So this is based on the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُرِدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيَسْرُ وَلَا يُرِدُ بِكُمُ الْعَسْرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for you and he doesn't want hardship for you. 
and it doesn't want hardship for you. Also, Aisha radiallahu anha mentions that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma khuyyaka Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayna amrayni, illa akhada bi aysarihima, illa akhada aysarahuma ma lam yakul ithman. So the Messenger, so Aisha radiallahu anha said, that if the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ever given a choice between two things, he would always take the easier option. He would always take the easier option. No. However, obviously, if a person is fasting, or if a person intends to break their fast, they need to also be aware of their surroundings. They need to be aware of their surroundings. So they shouldn't let people see them breaking their fast. And this is very important. So if a person goes to a certain place and he's traveling or he's ill, then if you go out into the community and people see you eating, they might have suspicious thoughts about you. So if they do see you eating, then explain to them, I'm not fasting because I'm ill, or I'm not fasting because I'm traveling. Now, and if they don't see you, then obviously it's better if you stay at home or if you hide the fact that you're not fasting. Not because it's not permissible, but because of the thoughts of the other Muslims. So the third category is if a person is harmed by fasting. If a person is harmed by them fasting. So if they've got severe matter and COVID symptoms, then it is not permissible for them to fast. It is not permissible for them to fast because they are harming themselves. They are harming themselves. Or if their recovery is delayed. If their recovery is delayed. Matter and if the doctor gives you, prescribes you antibiotics. Now, antibiotics need to be taken at certain times, uh, three, four times a day for seven days. If you miss a dose, then it, or if you miss a few doses, then it delays your recovery process. Therefore, that person, that sort of person, it's not permissible for them to fast, and they are committing a sin. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, "Wala tuqo bi aidiqum la tahmuka." Do not throw yourselves into destruction. And the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "La darra wa la dira." La darra wa la dira. Taib. The next person that the Sheikh mentioned, or the next type of person, is the Musafir, the person who is traveling. The person who is traveling, we've already talked about on a few occasions what is suffering, what is considered traveling. Traveling is whatever the people consider to be traveling. The norm, the custom of the people is considered traveling. So, for example, going from here to any other city in the United Kingdom, that is considered traveling. There's also another opinion where the scholars say if a person travels, for example, 48 miles and beyond, then they are considered a traveler. However, the illa or the reason why this sort of person is allowed to break their fast is because of them traveling. It is nothing to do with the difficulty of traveling. It is not to, nothing to do with the mashaqqa. This is extremely important. So you can't say to someone, if it's difficult for you to fast, then you can break your fast. However, if it's not difficult for you to fast, then you can't break your fast. We can't say this. This is not permissible. The person, the Muslim, is allowed to break their fast if they are traveling. In so many ayat يعني, that we've come across, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana minkum maridan aw ala safarin. Allah jalla wa ala mentions suffer. Allah did not mention difficulty. And the reason difficulty hasn't been mentioned because difficulty is relative. What, what, what a certain person finds difficult, another may not find difficult. Also, the mode of travel, it varies on what is difficult and what, is, what isn't considered difficult. So if a person is fasting, if a person Afghan, is traveling, then they are allowed to break their fast. However, the scholars also categorize the traveler into different types. The first type is a person in in the fitr. If it's the same for them in terms of fasting, in terms of difficulty, and it's okay for them, they can fast and they won't find any difficulty in it. And they can also fast and they won't find any difficulty in it. The scholars say in this situation, it's better for this person to fast. Why? Because it's easier for them to fast. They won't have to make it up. It's better for ridding yourself of the responsibility and fulfilling this wajib. And also the reward of fasting in Ramadan is not like the reward of fasting in other than Ramadan. 
the reward of fasting in the month of Ramadan is much greater than you fasting outside the month of Ramadan. Right. And also, the, the scholars use this in evidence that the Sahaba and the Messenger وسلم, were on a journey and everyone, all of the Sahaba but were not fasting. None of the Sahaba was, were fasting except for the Messenger وسلم, and another Sahabi called Ibn Abi Rawaha. So this Sahaba Ibn Abi Rawaha, Ibn Rawaha Afwan, he was fasting with the Messenger وسلم, and none of them blamed the other one for fasting or for not fasting. Fine. So if it's permissive, if it's equal, if it's the same for the same to the Muslim, whether they fast or not, then it's better for them to fast, meaning they don't find any difficulty in it. Right. The second situation is if once one of these two issues is easier, and it's easier for them to break their fast, or it's easier for them to carry on fasting, whichever one, one of them is easier. What should this person do? They should do the one that is easier for them to do. Based on the hadith, where the messenger where Aisha said that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma khuy rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam bayna amrayn illa akhadha aysarahuma the messenger was not given or presented with two situations except that he would take the one that was easier also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you rudullah bikum al yusr wa la yurid bikum al usr Allah wants ease and comfort for you and he doesn't want difficulty and hardship for you so the ease depends on the the, the, the one that's easy for the person that's fast Allah jalla wa ala also says wa ma ja'al alaykum fi din min haraj also, the next or the next category, the third, is if it is difficult for the person to fast without any hardship. If it's difficult without any, uh, if it is difficult for them to fast, like in they're not harmed by their fasting, then in that case, it's better for them to not fast. In this case, it's better for the person not to fast. Right. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Walha'idu wa nufusa'u yahrumu alayhim al-siyamu wa alayhim al-qada. So bear in mind, when we were talking about the person who is fasting and the person who is traveling, the Sheikh said that they're allowed to break their fast, like they need to, we have to understand that they need to make up their fasting. They need to make up the fasting. Also, the Ha'id and the nufusa'u, the person, the woman who experiences or who goes through her menses, and the woman who sees post or is going through postnatal bleeding. For them, it is haram to fast, number one. And they must also make up the days that they miss. First, it is haram for them to fast, and they must make up the days that they miss. Based on the hadith of the Messenger, then the Messenger was asked, he said, in the hadith, it's a long hadith, like in this is the part that is the Mahal Shahid. Is it not the case that if she sees her haid, if she goes through haid, then she doesn't pray and she doesn't fast. Also, hadith of Aisha, radiallahu anhu, in which a woman asked her, why do we make up the fasting? Like we do not make up the, uh, the, 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 the salah that we miss during our haid. And then Aisha, radiallahu anhu, said, كان يصيبنا ذلك فنؤمر بقضاء الصوب ولا نؤمر بقضاء الصلاة. This used to happen to us during the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we were commanded to make up the fasting and we were not commanded to make up the, the Salah that we missed. Right. The Haid or the time that it, it is wajib is if the woman sees the Haid any time from the beginning of the day up until the end of the day. So for example, the, 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 what is taken into consideration is if the woman actually sees the blood. So if she starts her fasting and her height starts at 10 a.m., then her fasting is ended. Yani it finishes there. And she has to make that day up. But right. if her height stops just before Fajr, if her height stops just before the time, yani during the time of Suhoog, her height ends and completely finishes, she has to fast that coming day. Even if she hasn't performed ghusl yet, even if she hasn't performed ghusl yet, she must fast. Right. What about during the end of the day? If she sees the blood half an hour, 20 minutes before before iftar, then her fast ends at that point. Now she'll be rewarded for whatever she missed or whatever she fasted, Afwan, like in her fasting ends at that point. Right. How about if she, towards the end of the day, half an hour, an hour, two hours before iftar, 
she starts to see the signs that her hide, that her menses is about to stop, start. So she gets back pain, مثلا, or can she, she can feel blood moving around, uh, or she can feel the pains that she usually feels just before the start of her hide. What does she do? She needs to carry on with her fasting. As long as there's no blood coming out of the private parts, out of the private part, then she has to continue her fasting. She has to continue her fasting. So the ibrah or the consideration is given or the hukum is connected to actually seeing the blood. Right. What about if a person has an excuse or another masala that the scholars talk about, if they are excused from fasting, like in that excuse or that reason for them breaking their fast ends during the day, some part during the day. Mathalan, we mentioned earlier on that if a woman is going through haid, then she doesn't have to fast. How about if her haid ends midday or if her haid uh, ends at 10 a.m. Mathalan? And she's able to fast the rest of the day. Do we tell her to fast for the rest of the day? Or do we tell her to uh, continue without fasting? The answer is that she's allowed to continue, or she has to continue without fasting. She doesn't need to abstain from food or drink for the remainder of the day. Likewise, if a person was traveling and they come back home at Zuhur time, مثلاً, or they come back home at Asr time, and they were traveling, when they come home, they can do whatever they want. They can carry on. They're not fasting. They don't consider themselves to be fasting so they can eat and drink and do anything else that a fasting person cannot do. So if the other, if the reason for them not fasting ends some part of the day, during some part of the day, then it is permissible for them to carry on not fasting. However, if a person, for example, if a person accepts Islam during the day, at مثلا, 12 p.m., they accept, accept Islam. They have to start fasting from that point onwards. And if a young person reaches the age of puberty during the day of Ramadan, midday, مثلا, or 10 a.m., or 2 p.m., whatever it may be, they have to start fasting from that point onwards. And it is wajib upon them. What is the difference between, or if a person is مثلا, not is insane and then they can come back to sanity during the day? They have to start fasting from that point onwards. What is the difference between the first set of people, the one who was ill, or the one who was traveling, or the woman who completely ends her height during the her height ends during the day, and the second lot, a person who accepted Islam during the day, or a person who a young person who's reached the age of puberty, or a crazy person, or an insane person, a mentally not well person, a person who's not mentally well, become insane. The difference is that all these individuals, it wasn't wajib upon them. The fasting was not wajib upon them. The obligation of fasting was not wajib upon them at that point. The obligation of fasting only came about during the day. So this young person, it wasn't wajib upon them to fast. Like in the reason for the obligation of fasting came about, which is they reached puberty. And also the person who is who accepted Islam sometime, some part of the day, during some part of the day, the reason for fasting being wajib only came about during that point. Lacking the person who has an excuse for breaking their fast from the beginning of the day, then they can carry on. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, Man akala awwal nahari The one who eats in the early part of the day, then let him eat in the latter part of the day. Taban, that is the person that has an excuse. That is the person who is excused. So we'll stop on that point, on that note, inshallah, and carry on from this point next week. Uh, the next masala is Walhamil wal Mugdi'u khafata ala waladayhima. The Hamil, the, the woman who's pregnant and the one who's breastfeeding, what should they do? We'll carry on from this point next week, inshallah. Um, just as a before I forget, with regards to the the summary, summary the students sent for al qawaad al fiqhiyah Inshallah, I'll mark it, mark it, and I'll have a look. I'll have a look at it and mark it, inshallah, and then hopefully uh, we'll discuss it in, in another gathering or so. Allah Taala, a'lam wa ahkamu billahi tawfiq.